So on this second day or Tuesday of the octave of Easter, this beautiful passage of Mary Magdalene, certainly when we read today's gospel text, we can see that deep love that Magdalene had for our Lord. And she was truly devoted to him, not just when he was on earth, while he was alive, even in death. And we can see how attached Mary Magdalene was to the Lord, that she would be the first to look for the dead Jesus, the dead body. She missed the Lord tremendously. And we are told precisely that she was grieving. These emotional expressions of love is indeed admirable. Certainly, when we love someone deeply, we will have certain emotional ties or certain sentiments for the person whom we loved. And that is why when we reflect on Mary Magdalene, perhaps it is also good for us to reflect our own relationship with the Lord. For many of us, our relationship with the Lord tends to be a cerebral relationship, a very intellectual relationship with Him. For Mary Magdalene, even though Jesus was dead, the Lord was very real to her. And she loved the Lord as if He was still there. But for us, what is our relationship with the Lord? Most of us, we relate on the level of knowledge and understanding, on the doctrines that we have received. But do we really feel Him in our lives? Do we really truly believe that He exists and that He is alive, that we can still relate to Him? Sometimes, perhaps some of us, when our loved ones return to the Lord, they are actually more present to us, even though they have returned to the Lord, than our Lord Himself. And this is something that we need to really ask ourselves, because there is this tendency, not just for some of you who are, tend to be intellectuals, and today most of us are educated, so we tend to use our head more than our hearts. And true for us, bishops, priests, and theologians, because of our philosophical and theological studies, we know a lot about Jesus. We can even expound beautifully about Jesus. We have plenty of insights, profound reflection on Jesus by reading the gospel. But very often, many of us, we do not really encounter the Lord in a real way we can offer interesting insight. And for this reason, it is always said, it is important that for priests and theologians, that we must do theology kneeling down, that is to say, on our knees, because it is more than just some intellectual insight, but whether a theologian or a priest is connected with the Lord as well, in terms of personal relationship. So we can see clearly Therefore, that for a real relationship with the Lord, we certainly need to have this experience of feeling for our Lord, of loving Him as we love another person. Because no one dies for an ideology. Very few. We die for a person. We don't die for an ideology. That is why you look at all the great saints of history, all the martyrs. Most of them were not theologians at all. They were not scripture scholars. They were simple people. They might only know three prayers, Our Father, Hail Mary, and Glory be. The most they know the rosary. They hardly even read the scriptures. But these were the people that will die for Jesus. You look at all the martyrs in the early church, martyrs in Korea, mart martyrs in Japan. These were ordinary lay people. Look at all those saints that the church have canonized. They were illiterate, actually. But because they have a deep relationship with Jesus, they were willing to even be martyred to death because they loved Jesus. Jesus was real to them. That is why a theologian might not die for Jesus, 
because knowledge is all in the head. It is just beautiful knowledge, you know, but it's not a heart relationship. When we love someone, we will die for the person. If it's a head knowledge, then we won't die for that because it's just another ideology. Yet, having said that, it is also good for us to recognize that Mary Magdalene also had that weakness. It is good to be loving towards Jesus, to fall in love with Jesus. It is good, necessary. But then, sometimes we allow our emotions to blind us in a relationship. And so this was the case of Mary Magdalene. She was grieving, but she was not able to recognize even Jesus when Jesus appeared to her. She thought that Jesus was the gardener, and she was more concerned, how can I find this dead body of Jesus that she loved? And she thought perhaps the gardener or, or the workman of Joseph Arimathea could have put the body somewhere else, and she wants to go and find the body. And she was totally absorbed by her emotions that she cannot see beyond that. And I think sometimes this is true even for those of us in our relationship with God, or even in your daily life, that we are so overcome by emotions that we don't see the larger perspective in a relationship. We tend to narrow down that relationship to just oh, nice feelings. And that's the whole problem, I think, of many young people. Huh? They only want romance. Of course, romance is important. Huh? Then because the poor couples have been married for 20 years, no romance, you know. Every day is martyrdom. Every day is just promise, a vow of love, but there is no romance. But for young people, they only want romance. But you see, the moment when they get married, they realize relationship is more than romance. Romance alone cannot sustain that relationship. So we need more than romance. And so that is why when you are courting, it is one kind of relationship. When you get married, it's another kind of relationship. And so Jesus, therefore, when he appeared to Mary Magdalene, it's good for us to understand this flow. Because Mary Magdalene, she was still thinking about a relationship with Jesus based on the Jesus of Nazareth. But Jesus has died. He is transfigured. He has a new body. And therefore, Jesus was actually inviting Mary Magdalene to a new level of relationship. She cannot relate to Jesus as if Jesus was still on earth. Mary Magdalene now is being called to a higher form of relationship with the resurrected Lord. But Mary Magdalene was not able to do that. She was clinging on to Jesus. And Jesus says, please, do not cling on to me. In other words, don't cling to that Jesus of Nazareth. After my resurrection, you must have a new relationship. What is new relationship? That's why Jesus told Mary Magdalene, do not cling to me because I have not yet ascended to my father. Go and find my brothers. Tell them, I'm ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. You notice, in these very words, there's a distinction of relationship. He is going to his father. The way Jesus relates to his father is different from the way our relationship with the father. We are adopted sons and daughters. But Jesus is one with God. And we are imitating the relationship. So there is a distinction. So we are called to move to the higher level of relationship with Jesus that is different from just an earthly relationship. And I think therefore it is important for us that in our spiritual life, the church has always warned us, especially mystics have always warned us, that there are some of us in our relationship with Jesus, we get very emotional, which is again not wrong. Huh? It's good to have emotional feelings, sentiments for our Lord. But at the same time, we need to be very careful. So there are some Catholics, they are very devoted to our Lord, which is good, but they get carried away by their emotions. They claim they have all kinds of visions, uh, messages from our Lord. Mystics always warn us we need to be prudent. We should not jump to conclusion because very often, sometimes it could be our own emotions that we project. 
to a religious experience. This is why it is important for us to realize that we need to be discerning. That is not to say, I'm not saying therefore, that God does not reveal His messages to people, to your own personal life, for your own personal growth. It's possible, but not absolute though. When God reveals to you, you need to have proper discernment. It's not absolute. It could be God telling you, oh, no, you should change your job, or whatever it is. It could be God telling you, but it's not absolute. But when you're talking about prophecy for the church, it's a different story. There's a called public prophecy. That one, you need to be very careful. So if you want to come and tell me, you know, your eminence, you know, I got a message from our lady for you because you need to do something for the church. Uh, that one is a different story. That one, we need to have proper discernment. That is why the magisterium used that discernment. So whenever we have this kind of discernment process, the church, the theologians, we don't work on the emotional level. When it comes to discernment, we use scripture, we use tradition, we judge the prophecy whether it is in agreement with scripture and tradition. So the church, the magisterium, therefore, has a duty to make sure that these messages are authentic. Though there is a process for it. So, having said that, therefore, I think it's important for us to try to bring these two together. We are not saying subjective, emotional feelings of God are not important. They are. But we are not also saying that the church's doctrines are just based on reason alone. We need to have both. That is why the doctrines of the church, we always say that it is uh, reasonable. It is not just based on reason, reasonable, which means to say you need to have a level of faith, a level of openness. So faith and reason, they do not clash. In fact, they help each other. And so our church's faith, our relationship is all based on faith and reason. There is certain objectivity, a certain subjectivity. Even your relationship, for example, if you fall in love with this guy and you want to marry him, you can't just use your feelings, I feel good, nah, nice. Nah. No, of course you feel nice and good. That is also important. Of course it's important. Then you've got to use your brains to see whether this guy can suit you, whether you all can live together, whether you all can agree, whether you have common shared values, whether you have shared interests. All these things are important. Because these are the things that give the relationship a very holistic relationship. If it depends on your romance alone, when problem comes in, it will not last for more than three months, you know. So we need to have all these other factors as well in our relationship. And so today, the Lord is inviting us, therefore, to truly uh, respond to that love and to build a relationship with Him that is truly personal, uh, that is wholesome. And in this way, we can truly grow through spirituality. It's a slow journey. The feeling high, yes, you can have, but that is only the beginning. It is not the end. It's just a starting point. And so, the church says, you know, if you want to grow in spiritual life, you need to go through the three stages. Huh? You've got to go through the stage of purgative. You have to go through. Then the illuminative stage. So, it's important that we need to go through that proper journey. It's a long way. It's a long journey. And a journey that never ends until we reach heaven with the Lord.